yeah, for whatever reason, there's a bunch of like hum coming out of this channel. East Broadway for one kilometer. This project uses sound recording to explore a watershed often taken for granted. This was a, a very experimental process. The participants were, were given some tools and some guidance, but uh, they are really just thrown together to figure out what they wanted to do with the recording devices. In 2017, Chum Salmon returned to spawn in East Van's Still Creek for the fifth straight year following an 80-year absence. What seems like a kind of uh, miracle is actually the result of sustained community-led efforts to learn about the creek, educate the public, and uh, tighten up environmental regulations to prevent industrial wastewater from draining into this body of water. The fact that salmon returned to spawn in Still Creek is directly tied to this waterway's present condition. The salmon act as a kind of barometer for understanding Still Creek's condition and the intricate relationships that make up this environment. Soundscape studies and acoustic ecology was really uh, born in this area in the 70s. We continue today in that tradition. So acoustic ecology is the study of how sound mediates communication between human animals and their environment. And I slipped in human animals instead of animal uh, humans <laughs> there because I'm proud to say that this process and this work extends this definition. That we've shifted not only to seeing how sound mediates between humans and the environment, but how the other animals, the salmon, how sound mediates their environment for them. Where is it, Jenny? Right there. Um, I was watching it earlier when I was up there, and um, it was it, it was actually down here, and it did like a loop and got to that part there. And then I was watching it for a while and I thought it would get up to that bridge and it was taking such a long time I went back to check <laughs> and then I we just saw it there.
that shift of sort of human beings getting out the way and realizing their place in the universe is an important shift and it has a long history. In fact, uh, most of the history of science can be seen as us uh, moving out of the center. We thought we were the center of the universe. We thought the sun moved around us. All these things have turned out to be quite wrong. And to a lesser extent, the humanities has also had this, this shift where we're starting to re recognize the value of our place in the world, not in the center, but as part of a larger web. Seeing how, as sound makers, we're just one of many sound makers in this environment, how seeing how the salmon use sound and how listening to them and their environment is part of that stepping aside or shift to the side. So we've used soundscape composition and sonification, and these have become important modes of generating work. They're grounded either in data or in real sonic places. And as such, this allows us this important vantage point of seeing our subjectivity as sound artists in relationship to real places and not just ideas that we, we have. Um, so our ideas, our subjectivity is being reflected through place, through data. In the entrance, when you come up, you'll see on the stairs, there's a big map of all the places we explored. And um, also shows you Still Creek, which is actually running underneath us right now. There's all these culverts, and they run down this hill, and Still Creek comes out around 14th and ran through. It also runs from the ravine in the opposite direction, and it heads uh, west. Is that west? East. east. Yeah. It goes that way to the lake, uh, to Burnaby Lake, and then down to the Fraser, and then all the way back. I can't see them in the, from the bridge. Yeah. <laughs> Should we call it a day? I mean, this is a long shot, so. Yeah. Is there water over here? This one. It's on this side, it's on the right side. I found right? water to the right. Yeah. We were never sure that there would be salmon or we would see salmon. Uh, it was always a gamble. People said, wait for it to rain and they'll come and it, it did happen and I can assure you that there are salmon out there and we have heard them. right above the salmon. Yeah, like that, so right where the bridge was, yeah, it was chilling, just, it was just chilling right there. And then two of them came, and then two of them were by the hydrophone, but then they, went, they swam past. Just at the end there? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, at, at that point there, like, I could have put it right in front of its mouth, and I don't think it would have moved. Like, because it was, you could see it opening and closing its mouth, so I don't know what kind of, mm. what, what that would have sound like. Who knows if they even vocalize with their mouths. The installation tonight really represents a huge range of different types of projects. As Brady alluded to, there's data represented sonically in a few different parts of the installation. There are also soundscapes, there are poetic compositions and voice work. So tonight we have 
all of these individual elements, which were created by um, groups of people and individuals and through collaboration, but they also form a whole together. So uh, I encourage everyone to see and hear how the pieces interact with each other and try mixing the room yourself by using your body and the room. So bring your head closer or further and see how the different dynamics uh, engage with each other and what niches emerge in the frequencies, in the pulses and rhythms, and just the subject matter itself. That's all I have to say about the installation. Just uh, get your hands dirty and enjoy.